Thank you, Ketan. And thank you all of you to be patient. Uh, I think, you know, we figured out the options and now we should be smooth enough to run this monthly meeting. Uh, so, Jai Jinnandar, everyone. Uh, I hope you all are safe at home and good in health. Uh, we are going through an unusual time of our life and it's very sad what's happening around us in the world with all the deaths and suffering. All we can do is continue our doing our job of staying at home, keep social distancing and continue praying for peace and well-being of all the lives on the planet. With that, I would request all of the members to have few minutes of silence, remember all of them and pray for them. So, uh, with this difficult time, on a positive note, I think we are learning and discovering many new skills among us. Something like music, family bondings are improving, meditation, yoga, cooking, cleaning, a lot of other things we are learning. So, as we started and, you know, we stated in the email recently, we'll continue virtual community sessions at least for next few months that's what we see and we'll continue sending updates to the community over the email please look for the email please look for the updates on the emails <clears throat> so before we begin the monthly meeting let me jot down the agenda for today's meeting so we will try to follow the same monthly meeting routine what we follow every month meeting in physical when we are physical in the temple with little bit of change because this is online so first, we'll begin with Naukar Mantra and few stubbins. Today, Arti Aunty is going to lead us for that. We thought it would be convenient if one person do this every session so that rest can mute and, you know, pray. We will ask some other member to lead us in the next future session. Then we will start with today's discourse. Then we will have a few announcements to make. So I'll go ahead and do the announcement section. And finally, we will end with the Sutra, which is believed to eliminate all the obstacles that is Uvasagram. And then the, for that, Arti Aunty will lead us for that. With that, let me hand over to Arti Aunty. So Arti Aunty, please begin. Jajananda, thank you, Riteshva, and thank you to the committee. <laughs> okay. Om Namo Arihantanam Om Namo Setanam Om Namo Arihantanam Om Namo Uvajayanam Namo Loe Sabha Sahonam Eso Panchanamukaro Sava Pava Parnasano Mangalarnan 
Padamam Havai Mangalam Padamam Havai Mangalam Chattare Mangalam Arihanta Mangalam Sita Mangalam Sahu Mangalam Kevali Panato Dhammo Mangalam Chattari Logutama Arihanta Logutama Siddha Logutama Sahu Logutama Kevali Panato Dhammo Logutamo Tari Sharanam Pavajami Arihante Sharanam Pavajami Siddhe Sharanam Pavajami Sahu Sharanam Pavajami Evali Pandatoni Dhammam Sharanam Pavajami Samaro mantra balo navakar eche chowla pura balo sar ena mahima no nehipar eno artananta apar sukhama samaro dukhama samaro samaro divasanera worry about it right now and that is what I summer of Marata summer of summer of summer of summer of summer of summer of summer 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 Samaro Mantra Balo Navakar Santona 
चरण कमल माँ मुझ जीवन नो अर्ज रहे दीन क्रूर ने धर्म विहोड़ा देखी दिल मर रहे करुणा भीनी आखो माथे आश्रो नो शुभ स्रोत मार्ग भूले ला जीवन पथ कने मार्ग करे उपेक्षा ते मार्गनी सोय समता चित्त करो वीर प्रभु ने धर्म भावना मंगल गीतोए गावे प्रभु मंगल गीतोए गावे मैत्री भावनो पवित्र झरणो मुझ करे शुभ था हो सकल विष्णु देवी भावना नित्य रहे देवी भावना नित्य रहे बहु पुण्य के पूज थी शुभ देह मानव नो मो तो ये अरे भव चक्र नो आटो नहीं एक टो सुख प्राप्त करता सुख टे छे लेश लो क्षण क्षण भयंकर भाव मरण आहो राम चीर हो लक्ष्मी अने अधिकार बदता शुभ्युते तो कहो शु कुटुंब के परिवार थी बदवापणो नय ग्रहो वधवापणो संसार नो नर देह ने हारे जवो ए नो विचार नहीं अहो हो एक पल तम ने हो निर्दोष सुख निर्दोष आनंद लोग में त्या थी भले ए दिव्य शक्ति मान जे थी झंझिर थी निकल अर वस्तु मान ही मुझ वो ए दया मुझ ने रही ए त्याग के पश्चात दुख ते सुख नहीं कौन छो हूँ कौन छो क्या थी थो शु स्वरूप छे मारो खरु विचार विवेक पूर्वक शांत भावे जो करया तो सर्व आत्मिक ज्ञान न सिद्धांत तत्व अनुभव्या ते प्राप्त करवा वचन कोनु सत्य केवल मानवो निर्दोष नर नो कथन मानो देह जैन अनुभव रे आत्म तारो आत्म तारो शीघ्र ओ 
सर्वात्मा समदृष्टि दो आ वचन ने हृदय लखो सर्वात्मा समदृष्टि दो आ वचन ने हृदय लखो thank you akya uh now let's uh, move to the next step <clears throat> so today's discourse uh it is very important that we remember the teaching of lord mahavir in this uncommon situation so pravin angle is going to talk about life of mahavir and teaching of mahavir so let me invite mahavir uh, pravin sha to begin today's discourse pravin angle please begin <clears throat> okay thank you everybody uh what i have done since the last week uh, we had the, the general things also mahavir's uh, life so uh, i'm going to just share with a little bit about parushan kalpa sutra and life of lord mahavir okay and it's kind of a overview and if you if you have any questions afterwards or anything you know of the, the presentation uh, you can always call me later on and we can discuss it one on one so let me move everybody can see the slide okay parishad parva everything is interconnected because most of the places the during parishad time they read the mahavir's life and you no know, he is preaching and uh, uh, all the principles revitalizing you no know, everywhere Parishan is composed of the two words pari plus vas is joining together, and in in a simple terminology, the meaning of the parishan is coming together from all direction. So we all get together at one place and do the uh, religious discourses, you no know, tapascharya, inspire everybody. Okay, parva is the religious. a religious spiritual activity celebrated together that's the definition of parva so the simple meaning is people coming together for religious activity now direct all your thoughts what is religious direct all your thoughts from external object towards inwards to reflect your qualities of the soul so we are this is the basic principles of jainism we are coming together to find your soul's quality and we are reflecting on that instead of what what we are is the outwards most of our life we spend you no know, five senses just do uh, we trying to enjoy our happiness of the five senses so we would like to see you know good things to see hear music or good good things to hear taste we you know again so these are all our five senses and, uh, and wherever we get enjoyment of these five senses that is the things all our outward object things the religious tells you you can have the same enjoyment when you go inward and that only through meditation so most mostly jainism buddhism or indian religion ultimate objective is do the meditation in meditation with inward go to all your senses instead of outward looking for happiness look for the same happiness or even more inwardly and once you have that one then you become a very spiritual person ultimately the realized one or kevanda okay this is the kind of a overview in uh, things on our religion now there are various names if you read the scriptures parishan what we call it today and popularly we know it but when you read some old books or anything 
these are all the various names also there so don't get sometimes mis misguided this is not the pollution this is not so this is just a list and i have just compiled it now kalpa sutra this is like you no know, uh, swetambar's tradition to recite the kalpa sutra during the pollution and what does the kalpa sutra means kalpa means an activity which enhances gnan charitra and tap any book that explains or that enhances our gnan our charitra and our tap tap is self control charitra is conduct and gnan is the religious knowledge and the sutra means scripture so you can see kalpa sutra is a scripture which describes how to enhance our gnan charitra or conduct and tap or self control okay and the meaning of kalpa sutra i hope everybody sees the slides also okay meaning of kalpa sutra kalpasutra is the ninth chapter what is the status in our jain scripture where does the kalpasutra uh, stands so kalpasutra is the this the entire kalpasutra is nothing but a ninth chapter of a religious scripture called dasasutta skand and the dasasutta skand is a book one of the book of 45 agams and it is a part of a chet sutra so you can just uh, i wanted to just show you where does it falls in the religious scripture and uh, the author is a bhadrabahu swami which is the last acharya who had the knowledge of 14 purvas and we can discuss it later on when we we'll, uh, talk about jain literature and jain scripture where does the bhadra Badrabahu Swami stands, which time period, and a, what kind of the contribution you no know, he has done to the Jain literature, and now Kalpa Sutra was not read publicly before, but the first time it happened is the Jain monk recited in Anandpur, in the courtyard of the King Drushan. to comfort the king for his summer sudden demise of his son however the, there are in the historically there are three kings named drusen between 515 uh, 519 to 549 600 or 627 642 and 652 654 so somewhere between 5 to 600 ad this tradition started in the jain religion somewhere in in that region you have to keep in mind one thing jain or any eastern religion they don't preserve the history they preserve the spirituality okay so sometimes uh, we don't have a really documented record existed anywhere when does it really begin when does these things the that is the tradition in the western country all right everything is documented properly while we have it only spiritually things are documented okay now what does the what are the topics that includes in the kalpa sutra life stories of tirthankar there are four tirthankars are in detail life stories mahavir swami parshnath neminath rushabdev and for the remaining 20 tirthankars we what we have is the time period and brief history of other tirthankars then in kalpa sutra we got it like life stories of acharyas which we call it stavira bali life of tirthankar is a one a one part stavira bali where the life stories of acharyas means all gandhars gandhar charitra is there kambu swami badrabahu swami stulibadra and ultimately devardhi gani acharya which is 
thousand years, nine hundred and eighty years after Lord Mahavir's Nirmana. So those kind of the things are documented in the Kalpa Sutra. Important topics in the Kalpa Sutra is besides the Tirthankar life and all the things what we hear, but there are rules for the monk. Uh, how to when you stay at monsoon, what are the staying rules? Rules for begging, bhiksha, rules for removal of hair, because every monks and nuns they have to remove once all their hair by the hand, case lochan. And that is the before the monsoon begins, that is they have to do it. And Shamatna. Now, this is the kind of a characteristics of the monks. Now they explain it that the first Tirthankar, the, bit, the middle 22 Tirthankars, and the last Tirthankar. And sometimes, though, uh, we can see okay, what kind of the characteristics of the monks had it during Rishabdev time. Their understanding was difficult, but their implementation was simple. They call it Jard and Ruju. Jard means it is difficult for them to understand. But they implement, they, they always like simply, without arguing whatever Guru says, whatever he explains, they follow it properly, okay? So their understanding was difficult, their following is the simple. While the 22 Tirthankars, or the middle 22 Tirthankars, their understanding was also proper, and their implementation was simple. So it's called Pragna and Ruju. But for Mahavir Swamis, which is the last Tirthankar, their monks, first of all, they don't understand and their implementation is vakra, selfish. Where do I get benefit out of it? This is the kind of he, Kalpa Sutra explain the qualities or impact of the time on a monks. That last Tirthankar, uh, Mahavir Swamis, because all of our monks, we don't have any monks and nuns from Parshanath or any other Tirthankars. Okay? Oh, the whole tradition is of Mahavir Swami and later. Okay, let me move it further. Now, these are the five activities of the lay people during the pollution. This is most important for us. Jivdaya or Amari Pravartan. Uh, we have to do it anytime, but specifically during pollution, we must do it. Jivdaya, Amari Pravartan. Humanitarian activity, Sadarmik Vatsalya. Now, Sadarmik Vatsalya, people are making very narrow meaning. Okay, only who are Jain, that's what we have to help. No, that is not the Jain principle, Shiva. Jain principle has no sectarian. Anybody, and particularly human being, is the highest, needs the help, we have to help. Okay, because we are inner one. We are helping somebody, all right, that is a compassion. And compassion is the qualities of the soul. Forgiveness, that is also, no, most important all these three qualities, Jivdaya, humanitarian activities, and the forgiveness. Any hard feeling I have created with anybody, you must go ask for forgiveness before you do Samvatsari Pratikaman, okay? Well, Samvatsari Pratikaman, you make a general forgiveness for everybody. But generally says, if you have somebody hard feelings, you must clean it out first before you do the Samvatsari Pratikaman. And then during the Pratikaman, you can do people whom you haven't reached, you are not able to reach, and everybody else. Then, Forgive. Then the number four is what you see is the penance or wrath. You got to do, at least they say it, it's recommended Artham Tap. If you cannot do Artham Tap, no, three days fasting. You can do one day, whatever day, but all eight days, you got to take some wrath 
all right instead of you know keeping all your you know mouth anything what you would like see in which you eat like normally what we do and then this is a very important thing there is no shalya means when you take any vrat or pinans make sure internally you don't deceit anybody no sometimes no you publicize okay i have done a thing and no everybody then you see it oh who is coming who is not coming to ask no are you okay or not whatever it is so there should not be any deceit you are doing internally those vrat properly then there is no niyano I mean should not be like desire for personal gain or oh if i do these things i will attain any personal gains okay and that's because of my uh, tapascharya and when you do it don't do it in mithyatva you must know why you are doing it and what are you going to do what are you reflecting keep in mind tapascharya by itself is not a religion whatever you reflect in the tapascharya during the entire day okay that reflection is the religion okay so keep that thing in the mind if you are doing it tapascharya is the religion then it is a false belief all right that's mithyatva so these are the three things you must understand that and the last uh, act is spreading of the religious principle or chaitya paripati okay but right now we take a very narrow meaning you just go different temples and visit them actually you spread the religious principles and only way you can spread the religious uh, principles is doing all these five activities at any place you go any different cities or any place tirth or whatever you go but make sure it is all five things you do jivdaya humanitarian activity forgiveness and those kind of the things all right now this is just i'm, I'm summarizing little bit but let me move uh, the i wanted to you know go to mahavir's life now so when i will send you this Sorry, presentation to everybody Yeah. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I am moving the slides forward. Can you tell me what slide you want to go to? Uh, I will do it. I I can do it here now. Do you do you want me to tell you or do you think I'm 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 moving it? Will it okay? Ah, इल्ले प्रवीण भाई खाली तो हमारी साइड मूव था ऐसे बाकी बताने चाहिए ने आ हमारी साइड देखा है ऐसे. Oh my God. <laughs> i just thought uh, everybody is saying so all right then one minute i i am really sorry no no I problem kalpa sutra reading okay that is i slide on it oh my god <laughs> no no problem we are on uh, kalpa sutra reading ane tame je move thao ne to mane next slide ke jo to i will move it to the next slide yeah okay now I uh, Kalpa Sutra readings in Upasra Maharaja when they read for first three days it's a preparatory days and in the preparatory days uh, is the explanation of Astanika Par duties of the lay people what we already we already talked and twelve hours of lay people I don't want to spend any time next slides just to go and it just uh, you can read these things. each day they are defining what we are going to read in the kalpa sutra so fifth day that's where they start reading the kalpa sutra the sixth uh, sixth day is a birth celebration of lord mahavira uh, fifth day is the birth celebration of lord mahavira and then uh, birth of the lord mahavira and then celebration is on the sixth day we that is the things we read okay then childhood education marriage like no we give gift to all the children that's on the sixth day the seventh day is the life stories of the remaining tirthankars so we complete in one day from 
birth celebration to all the way marriage and renunciation, diksha, all those things we complete it on the sixth day. And the seventh day is the one life stories of the remaining 23 Tirthankars, Stavidavali, and uh, means all the life stories of the Acharyas, okay, and Samachari. So these are, this is the way we complete Parivishan. Next slide. So you see the picture of Bhagwan Mahavira. Now we are going to go through the life of Bhagwan Mahavira. All right. In life of, uh, next slide, contents the past incarnation, which is past 27 past lives of Mahavira. Birth of Mahavira, then householder life is 30 years. Life as an ascetic means after renunciation, 12 and a half years, Bhagwan Mahavir's life. Then omniscient life, Kivagnani, 29.5 years, he remained as Kivagnani, traveled from place to place, okay, and preach the Jain principles, okay, and that, that's nothing but the universal. Uh, compassion, brotherhood, all those values and ultimately Nirvana. Next slide. Now, these are the important dates. Conception, Asar Chat. Now, in Svetambar tradition, this is different than the Digambar tradition. Swetambar tradition you know, believes the conception occurred to one of the Brahmin family and then the fetus got transferred to Kshatriya family. It's kind of a tradition uh, for all Jain. The Tirthankars are always born in the Kshatriya or warrior family because they have to fight enemies which are nothing but our kashai and that kind of the qualities is possessed by the kshatriya family okay and that's why they are always in the king families they are born so the conception the birth diksha what this this chart gives you the dates asar sut chart all right, we are, again, this is all in the calendar point of view. The birth is Chaitra Sutteras, Diksha is Makshar or Push uh, Vaddasam. Now, you have to keep in mind there is a difference whenever you come to Vaddhiti. There are two different calendars exist in Jainism. One is a Rajasthani calendar, okay, which Everybody accepts that. Everybody else except Gujarat, Gujarat, Maharashtra. Okay, Gujarat and Maharashtra, they have a different calendar, and they name the same day different way. And just to give you the idea, sometimes some people are from Rajasthan or northern side. They have a different naming convention. It's the same day but they got the naming convention that when there is a Vattiti, they call it one month ahead. Like Maksar is called Gujarati. It is same month, a same those Vattitis, they call it Kosh. And I don't want to go into the detail of all this, but right now that's the way both the calendars are going. Days are not different. It is the same day. They name it different way. All right, and then the Kivalgnani is a Vaisak Suddhasam. Whenever you see the Sud, there is only one Titi. Both are calling the same way, but what Titis, they got a different name on the month. All right, and liberation. So this one is what you are seeing it that there are past 27 lives, uh, they define it. Okay, now the way we, we don't have any beginning. 
or ending. But his past 27 lives only begins when Mahavir Swami's soul attains Sabhyatva. And from that day onwards, the number of past lives are counted. In case of Mahavir Swami, at the Naisar, Naisar bhav, you attained Samyatva and from there we consider that was the first life and then so and so forth. All the 27 lives are defined here. Okay, I'm not going to go all the detail, but you can see how many times he became human, how many times he went to have, uh, heaven and come to next slide. You can see uh, the, the next slide. Okay, then in the next slide you will see that on the 19, 19th life he went to seventh hell. Bhagwan Mahavir's soul suffered because he did significantly uh, pap karma, okay, sin during 18 life, which is the Tripushta Vas Vasudev. All this uh, Mahavir Swami's detailed life, there is a book called Mahavir Katha, which is already in the e-library, and we will send you the list of the books which you can read, Mahavir's different lives, okay, properly understand it. Because we are Jain, we should know our scripture, and also, we should be at least familiar of complete Mahavir's life. Uh, we Jain have Mahavir's life very little one, except like you know about Chandan Bala or Chand Kursik Nag or, or, or those kind of the incidences, you know it. Other than that, we really don't know the details of the Mahavir's life, which is documented in our scriptures, all right? And uh, you can just see the, he also went, you know, become a lion on the 28th life. Then again, uh, he went to hell for, uh, on the fourth hell. And with all this sinful, you know, what prop he did, still he attained the Kevardhan. So that you can imagine, that's a, this is the capacity of our soul. Hmm? What did you say? Okay, what I'm trying to say, our soul can take us all over action along with the thought process because the thought comes first before action occurs. All right? So with that thought process, you can go to hell or you can attain to liberation. And Mahavir's life is a pretty classic example. He went all this cycle and with his determination, he come out of it, okay, at the, at the last life. And if you read the Mahavir Swami's life on the last life, all that Upsarga and Parisha, what he has to go through it because of the past life, whatever the karma he acquired, he is kind of a going through that suffering and come out of it and ultimately he is like uh, there are no kashai and that took him 12 and a half years of meditation. It is like we have we have documented what the pascharya he did. That is the wrong way of looking Mahavira. Mahavira was a yogi, not tapasvi. Mahavira never took any kind of a vow, oh, I'm going to take four months uh, upvas or one month upvas or anything like that. Okay. Uh, I, will, I will explain you in the next slide. Next slide. In the, after that, but anyway, the Swetambar tradition says, 
Rushabh Datta and Devananda Brahman and then transfer of the fetus occurred. This is just the major things I'm documenting in the slides. And uh, uh, Siddharth and Trishla, that's where the birth occurred. Conception occurred with uh, Rushabh Datta and Devananda Brahman. Uh, birth, will occur, birth occurs now Trishla, Siddharth and Trishla. Dream of the mother Trishla and you know, we do all that celebration of the dream and then birth celebration and then they name Vardhaman. So Mavir name occurred afterwards which you know, Indra gave him the name. Then we talk about the family, fearless Vardhaman. These are kind of the stories which we can go later on uh, if we have the time and we can you know, explain you some say, important stories how this thing is taking place. And um, one of the things you see uh, before, just a minute, go to previous one, right. The death of the parents. Mahavira, when he was in mother's womb and he thought something really happened and he was not you know, moving in the mother's womb and Trishla was very you no know, see what very you no know, in in a state of shock that that I lost my uh, baby or you no know, fetus and Mavi realized it okay, that if I leave the family my parents will be really making, I will be making significantly miserable without me. And he took a vow in the mother's womb that I will not do any act oh, to hurt my feelings. So I will not renounce the world until my parents are gone. And that happened at the age of 28. Both parents died. Okay, and Mahavira wanted to go for Diksha. Then his older brother requested him, hey, please wait right now. The, our parents are gone and if you are going to leave. Then uh, no, I will be very much miserable. And Mahavira respected the older brother's wish and stay for another two years. So you can, the lesson now, what, what Mahavira's life is even teaching you, and we will go through some of those things, okay, that, that you don't do this kind of the action by hurting families, and he makes sure that when he's going to take the diksha, the, he is satisfying everybody, he's not you know, leaving behind, like crying, other relatives okay that's the that's the important things you got to understand the marvelous life point of view next one this is the list of the families the mother father uh, again here i want to make sure digambar do not consider that he was conceived by divananda and rusabda okay he was conceived by trishla and siddharth so they don't accept uh, these two traditions have uh, two different things and why don't ask that one. That's the way it is. Okay. And then uh, second thing is if you look into in this chart, Mavir's married okay, to Yashoda and had a daughter named Priyadarshana and had a son-in-law, Jamali. I mean, we can just list off the, all the families. Again, Igambar tradition does not believe Mahavira was married at all. Okay? Rest of the things are the same. Again, Mahavira took the Diksha 30 years and all other things, but not. So these are the two differences, you know, and I will recommend the books for Digambar tradition, Mahavira's life, and Swetamba tradition, Mahavira's life. Okay? Uh, but... Uh, ultimately, the 30 years took the diksha, it took 12 and a half years of meditation, and then uh, he attained the Keval Grant and then traveled for 29 and a half years to preach what he realized 
uh, during these 12 years of meditation. Next, life as the ascetics, great renunciation. And these are the important incidents that occur. Affliction of Sulapini, Chandakausik the serpent, deadly torture by Sangam, Chandan Bala, and the last calamity is the nails in the ear. Most of you may be familiar of all these stories. All right. And uh, if if we have the time, we can go through you know these stories okay. later on. All right. So that's the kind of the things what you see <laughs> in the Mahavir's life as an ascetic. Okay. Mm -hmm. After Kevagnan, the things are different. But this is before the Kevagnan, Mahavir lived in a jungle. And where did he stay every night? He stayed Shabbat. in Dev Devi's temple, the Hindu's Dev Devi's temple. You can realize that Mahavir Bhagwan. For 12 and a half years, whatever is documented, you will find that Mahavir did not stay in Jain Upasra or no, nothing like that. Okay. He stayed at night outskirts of the village. And generally, Hindu temples located, when I use the word Hindu in a loose sense, this is all Dev Devis of Hindu, uh, which is always at the outskirt of the village. And then he went to jungles always for the meditations. All right. And the purpose of the meditation is to get rid of all the Kashai. And once you get rid of the Kashai, then you are get rid of all your karmas. Because Kashai is the only one causes you to acquire karma. All right. Next slide. Enhance. Now this is the what we have done. We documented how many times Mahavir did fastings. Uh, six months once. Fasting of five months and 25 days. This is the Chandan Bala time. Uh, once. Fasting of four months is nine times. Fasting of three months. So in, if you read the, all the list, in 12 and a half years, Mahavira did Parana 349 days, 349 Parana, only one meal a day. And that is also in the hands, Karpatra. Mahavira did not have any ball or anything to carry the meal. Or it is like a Digambar monks know what they do it is a Karpatra. You, in the hand, all right, and it's only once, whatever in the hand, he acquired, like basically the dry food, because in the hand, like uh, the incidents in Chandan Bala, the bakula, okay, is the uh, beans, which are, which are the one she, he got it, he did the spana, for uh, five, five months and 25 days by using the bakura and only in a hand and that only one meal a day. So you can imagine that 349 meals C8 in 12 and a half years. That means one in every 12 days. Mahavi on an average ate one meal every 12 days. He was engrossed in a meditation so much that whenever he felt body needs the food, then he will go and get the food. It is not like that. He took the vows for this one. This tapascharya happened. Okay, that is a, the keep certain things in the mind. Tapascharya happened versus you take a vow before uh, you do the tapascharya. Okay, that is a significant difference. In case of Mahavira, Mahavira did meditation and it is the sun energy kept it going. Like we had a classic example here, Hiraratan Mane, right? He did not eat so many days any food, all right? Because he was acquiring the energy right from the sun, whatever the body needs to maintain 
healthy life. All right, this is just a side note. Next slide. Omniscient life. When he attained the Keval Gnan, okay, that after attaining the Keval Gnan, again the tradition is now he will preach the, uh, to the common people that, okay, before that, for 12 and a half years, he did not preach, he did not speak even. It was kind, kind of the you know, uh, moan for 12 and a half years. You can just imagine uh, how, how much you know, things it required for him to control the Kashai or to eliminate the Kashai from, better word is like to eliminate the Kashai from, from, from his life so that Kashai don't arise in him. No anger, no greed, no deceit, no lust, nothing. All right. Just that thing completely eliminated from the life. Okay. Then the first discourse, where, wherever he attained the Keval Gnan, there was no human being. So the first discourse he did, who were there? Only animals and Dev Devis. Okay. And they were not going to take Diksha, they are not going to be becoming a Jain in that sense. Okay, so the history says the first discourse was a failure because he couldn't convince anybody to accept these these uh, these principles because there was no human being there. For remaining all other Tirthankars, on the first discourse, they established the order. In the Mahavir Swami's case, is the second discourse. That's where he went to nearby town, delivered the discourse, and there where he come across with all eleven Gandhars. He and not only Chandan Bala. At that time, Gautam Swami took the diksha, and Chandan Bala. The first woman take the diksha. All right, and the fourth, four, four Jain Sang only established once somebody becomes a Shravak and Shravika. Anand Shravak took twelve vows of lay people. He was the first Shravak took the Lord from Lord Mahavira. 12 vows, which is 5 Anubrats, 3 Grunvarats, and 4 Sikshavrat. And uh, we will go through once, uh, we did it in the past, once, you know, the entire detail of those. But that was done. Anand Shravak is the first Shravak, but it is the Mahavir Swami who gave 12 vows, okay, of lay people. And first Shravika is the Sulsa Shravika. And Mahavir Swami gave her the 12 vows of lay people. So if you really look into it, all our Guru is the same as all monks and nuns. Okay, lay people's Guru is also Mahavir Swami because he is the one who gave us the 12 vows. Okay, and this, this thing is documented in a seventh Angagam Upashak Dasan and you will see all the description of this all 12 vows of lay people in that book. Upashak Dasan is all Gujarati's translation is available on e-library and Hindi. Both Hindi and Gujarati's are available. We do not have all 45 Agams translated in English still. Okay. And then uh, 11 Gandhars, the Gosalak, and these are the topics we will be just, just overviewing it. Now, the doubts of the Gandhar. These 11 Gandhars, and you, you know the story of the Gandhar, uh, Gautam Swami, Agni Bhuti, Vayu Bhuti, Vekya, Sudharma Swami, which is the fifth Gandhar. Uh, just go to the next slide and then we'll come back to this slide. Okay. The uh, number six is the Mandit. 
मौर्य पुत्र अक्रमप्रीत अचल भ्राता मेतार्यो एंड प्रभास द इलेवन गंधर इट इज द इमीजिएट डिसाइपल्स ऑफ महावीर मेल डिसाइपल्स ओके नाउ आई एम टॉकिंग ऑल द फर्स्ट फोर आई टोल्ड यू चंदन बाला आनंद श्रावक एंड दिस वन दे आर दे मेड द संघ एस्टाब्लिशिंग द फोर फोल्ड ऑर्डर संघ बट दिस इलेवन गंधर्स they are very very knowledgeable very uh, learned you no know, people but they had a doubt each one had one doubt and go to the previous one all right like that like indrabuti gautam the first gandhar he has a doubt soul exist or not agnibuti karva exist or not vayubuti body is soul or both are different vakya five elements and sudarma swami in next life humans are reborn as a human or not now this way i have listed all 11 but if you read all 11 doubts you will see the entire jain karma philosophy that is the whole the answer to these things is actually makes up all our karma philosophy but important aspect here what mahavira did when he answered all these people who came with the doubt he answered not using jain philosophy he answered using upanishads and vedas and uh, hindu literature and he explained this is what the vedas are telling you or upanishad depending upon the question all right so you can see what mahavira convinced them that you are interpreting wrongly your own literature and he interpreted that way and convinced everybody and then everybody became his disciple now out of the 11 gandhars nine of them attained uh nirvana when mahavir was alive so at the time of mahavir's nirvana only two gandhar left uh previous child please they go to previous yeah indrabuti gautam and sudarma swami these are the number 1 number 5 they survived mahavir after attaining mahavir nirvana the responsibility of jain sangh fell into indrabuti gautam and sudarma swami now we have a different tradition comes into the picture digambar and swetambar digambar believed indrabuti gautam become the head of the sangh while swetambar says because indrabuti gautam attained the keval nan next day Sudarma Swami is the only one really survived, and he become the sang, the head of the sang of Jain sang uh, after Mahavir's Nirvana. So don't get confused. It is how people, how each sect formed, and what how they are interpreting each one. Our important is not the history. What is the teachings of Jainism? who did it what did it what not is good to know but if there is any difference don't get carried away that this is right things or this is not the teaching is the same whether you look at the digambar or you look at swetambar traditions there is no difference in the teachings of jainism all right so make sure we understand and don't get carried away between sect to sect and this is right this is wrong and only those kind of the things occur when people have no not a good knowledge about that okay uh, it, it doesn't matter all right now next slide next one okay now what is the establishment of jain order gandhar 11 that's the gandhar is a immediate disciples okay male ascetics uh, during the mahavir's life 
14,000. And the number of female ascetics is uh, 36,000. Male laity Shravak is 159,000. This is no at the time of Mahavish Nirvana. What is the total uh, Jain Sangh consists of? Female laity is 318,000. Evil Gnani Muni is 700. Uh, Avdi Gnani Muni is 1300. And Manopare Gnani Muni is 500. So this is kind of a you know, overview for the establishment of the Jain order. Next. Now, here is the other things. Monsoon halls of Bhagwan Mahavir. Bhagwan Mahavir, 12 and a half years of no, uh, like Sadhak Dasha, before attaining Kivagna, and then 30 years of uh, Kivagdani, total 42 years, 42 monsoons, and because the monsoon is important in the sense, no, person stay at one place for four months, monks and nuns stay at one, okay, and you can see, the, these are the, all the places near Bihar uh, area, okay, near Bihar area. 11 times, no, he did in Rajgriya, all right, which is like where Acharya Chandanaji's and you know, Virayatan places, okay. Bhagwan Mahavir spent 11 monsoons at there, no, different, different year, I mean, okay. And you can see what are these uh, places. Most of the places, no, there are some places as a smarak, some places are developing, but there are not that many Jains in that area, okay? It is run by like, you no know, mafia or whatever you can call it. At night, you don't even go out after six o'clock or something. No, you stay wherever you are and that's it. Or you come back before six o'clock. So you can see where Mahavira you know, spent all the time. Similarly, Buddha did the similar places. And that area right now, you no know, Jainism is proliferating basically in Gujarat and Rajasthan and Maharashtra. Most of the Jains are there located, but very few you will find it uh, in in the areas. That's where Mahavira and everything. You know, I do come across sometimes youth. We want to travel and see all these places. And my recommendation is always to them, please don't go by yourself unless no, you are in a group or you are joining a tour. They take care of proper precautions and everything. Otherwise, uh, if you try to venture yourself, you will be uh, really miserable. That's, that's the one thing I'm telling you, okay? But at least you can see where they are, all the details of history. And now there is a map available now, actual pinpointing each places. That's where the Mahavira spent, you no know, Chaturmas. Next. Next slide. This is the last slide that I see. Oh, this is the last slide you see. Okay. All right. That's good. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. I, I did not realize that. But anyway, uh, this is the kind of the overview. Now, what are the things we are going to learn from Mahavira? Uh, how much time do I have, Ritesh? Uh, you have three more minutes. Three more minutes? Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I'll just finish it quickly. What are the lessons to be learned from Marvel's life? Okay. Yeah. The first, I think one thing I already explained to you that uh, during the mother's womb, he took that uh, vow. Now, the second thing you can see when Marvel took the Diksha, okay, he took the, he renounced by himself. He self-initiated, okay. He did not have any guru like Buddha had when he took the diksha and those kind of the things. So he has the really powerful self-determination, self-determination, even though Parshna tradition was that time existed. Later on, when Mahavira attained the Kevagnan, uh, uh, Gautam Swami had a 
significant conversation with the Parsnath monks. All right. And the two traditions merged and they accepted Mahavir's uh, leadership. So that's the second point I wanted to bring it out. The third one, okay, Mahavira, after Diksha, when he, when he took the Diksha, he had only one piece of cloth, which is Lord Indra gave it to him and he carried that one with him. Then a poor person, you no, know, asked for donation to remove his poverty and Mahavira took that piece of cloth, cut in two and gave it to him half the, half the piece because it was a very expensive one and he left it. Important thing is after taking the Diksha, Bhagwan Mahavir gave the donation. He had only one piece of the cloth and he, he thought, I don't need the full piece. I, I could still live with the half. All right. And still continue my journey. He gave it to that one. That is like I never found in the history afterwards that the monk, after taking a diksha, giving the donation. Haribhadra uh, Suri used to do it. Okay. Haribhadra uh, Suri, as the, when you read his life, it is even after the diksha, he will feed the poor. He will go to the kitchen, bring the foods and give it to the poor. So in the past, they were doing it. Later on, the tradition is changed that the monks cannot donate because they have taken these five great vows. They don't have any, any possession of that. That's the kind of the interpretation came. But here, like Mahavira's case or Haribhadra Suri's case, you will see that they, they were doing it. All right. So I just wanted to share with you a few things like that about the Mahavira. Mahavira. Just one point. Uh, last point, Mahavira was the first one who gave, who initiated women at the same level is the man. Okay. The later on, somehow the tradition put more, much more restrictions on the woman, but not man. Okay. But, but when Mahavira initiated Chandan Bala, it is not like that you cannot attain the liberations or you cannot attain these things. There are no restrictions on it. If they treated, he treated equally. And if you notice the, if you read the history of India, 2,500 years ago, you no know, history, the woman was considered property. Look at Chandan Bala was sold on the street. All right. And you will find many cases that women were like treated the property of the man in that culture. Mahavira, not only that you know, initiated Chandan Bala and put it at the equal footing to all men and women. That is the one of the biggest revolutionary things that was the Mahavira. No, did we got to look back that way? In this country, we have opportunity to treat women and men the same instead of saying it. Oh, they cannot recite this. They cannot do this. That okay. We may take one session on that one later on, putting the examples of the, our scriptures. Thank you, everybody. All right, Ritesh. Thank you so much, Prime Uncle. And I just wanted to ask you, I don't know if you can share this slide or is it available on e-library? Oh, yeah, you can have it all, all this. I'll send you the copy. Perfect. Thank you. I will so send you, you can distribute to everybody. It is yes. in the e-library also, the okay. presentation. My every presentation what I have is available on e-library. But sometimes they may not be up to date. So I, I can I update it once I did that one so much, you no know, changing anytime I update that one. Okay. Okay. In the okay. e library also, but most of the information is in the e library. All right. Oh, all right. Thank uh, you. But we, we can distribute it. Yes. All right. So, uh,
thank you Praveen uncle for a wonderful discourse uh, the next step we have is the announcements and before we go to announcement i just learned uh, about one sad news that dr mansook baiwani uh, passed away yesterday and uh, he was 95 years old and i i think you know mahesh bhai varya can share more information about him so mahesh bhai can you share uh, more details uh jay chandra uh dr vani uh, we also knew him for many many years and very sadly he passed away i believe yesterday uh im natma ne param shanti aape bhagwan ne prarthna karu chu ane just a brief background about dr vani uh dr vani uh, was really a pioneer for our indian community in the triangle area he was one of the very first who arrived here i believe about 1960 before most of us came to this place and he was instrumental in establishing the hindu society of north carolina and was very active in the community most importantly he was a scientist uh, he worked at the rti the research triangle institute and his uh, expertise was in the developing botanical medicines uh, botanical products for medicinal use and one of his most important discovery which is now used worldwide is the discovery of a medicine called texol texol is a chemotherapy agent which has been very successfully used uh, in the treatment of uh, different mm -hmm. cancers including ovary cancer breast cancer lung cancer and it has really revolutionized the treatment of this uh, deadly diseases he has also developed uh, several other chemotherapy agents all derived from botanical products that was his expertise and uh, i believe he was nominated even for the nobel prize uh, he had also achieved a lot of accomplishments and prizes uh, nationally and internationally for his amazing work in the medical sciences and as a amazing uh, credit to him uh, i think he's one of the only indian who has a name plaque at a national park the texol medicine that was developed comes from a tree called the yew tree the yew tree grows in the northwest uh, near oregon and the national park in oregon uh, next to a yew tree is a signpost in the name of dr vani uh, honoring him as a discoverer with his other scientists at rti of the texol medicine that's just a brief background about dr vani thank you everybody and the amnatma ne param shanti aape we can have a moment of silence in his uh, uh, remembrance uh just can you we hold on one minute i want to do add one thing of dr vani how Thank did he, yeah, okay he attended every mahavir jayanti program okay our uh, right from the way i never no he never missed any mahavir jayanti as long as he was in uh uh ralin uh, dharam area but most important thing our murthy in 1986 when we put in a hindu temple he was the one of the instrumental who pushed that one i'll tell you why they give you little background that in the beginning hindu society decided only the five main murthy murthis which is you see in the center and not the 11 uh like at the end later on it happened and they did a voting okay they put so many murtis and voting and naturally in mahavira case mahavira is not going to get maximum vote okay so only jain will give the vote but i went to every board of directors personally one on one basis 
And when I went to Dr. Vani and met him in RTI and explained the situation, what has happened, we have been active in the Hindi community. We are part and parcel of the Hindu community. But by giving the vote, this majority is Hindu. So they are not, we cannot get the Mahavir Murti in this way. We suggested that hey, please expand this thing, put you know, and make it like 11 Murtis, three on each side along with it. And finally, board decided to expand it from five to 11 and we got Mahavir Murti. But Dr. Vani promised me even at that time that I will discuss with all the board of directors one on one basis okay, and we'll get it convinced. And that is how we got the Mahavish Murti. I think this is you know, one of the factors. There are many others one. But uh, no, Mahavira, uh, Dr. Vani, I look at him very respectfully okay, because of his effort. No, we have the murti. Otherwise, we would have a little bit no problem, no political problem. These are the things. Afterwards, we are all become the same. Okay. Afterwards, I know Mr. Sharma even told me, I think you did the right things. We have a nice all 11 murtis here, and we get so much contribution now, which no, if you have restricted only these five murtis, you would not have got that much contribution. Even, okay. And uh, they appreciated after six months. Okay, I'm just going to give you a little history behind it. All right, we can now have a moment of silence or whatever. Okay, yeah. okay. so uh, thank you, Mahesh Uncle, and thank you, Ravin Uncle. Uh, so, yes, so we can have a moment of silence and have him on our thoughts and prayers. No worry, I'm down. Thank you, everyone. So uh, now coming to the next agenda item, uh, those are announcements. So I'll quickly go over through those. Uh, first is about Mahavir Jayanti. I know we are, we all are missing the typical buzz excitement of Mahavir Jayanti in April. Uh, committee is working on a possible future date of this event. Till now, we don't have any news. But yes, as soon as we have any updates, we'll send you email and update all the community members. Uh, next announcement is about Pashala. Uh, Pashala teachers are working on possibility of virtual sessions. And I'm happy to announce that we will be having the first virtual session on 19th April. That is next Sunday. And the time is morning 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Please look for Pashala email for more details. Uh, the next is about the next Sunday session. Uh, we have some Niji session coming next Sunday. Uh, we will make sure it doesn't overlap with Kids Pashala. And an email with the session details will be sent out soon in the next few days. Uh, next update is about JAP. Uh, as we all know, we started the ACNC assistance program to help members with groceries and medicines primarily. Uh, we are extending with other, uh, other help as well. Uh, but I would like to mention here that, you know, uh, one one important thing that volunteers are trying their best, trying their best to take care of every request. So there is a possibility that, you know, there might be a delay or something, but just please be patient with that. And we will serve every request as soon as possible. Uh, the, the one more announcement we want to make is in this difficult time, uh, doctors, nurses, and everyone in the medical community, they are in the front, they are our true heroes. And to appreciate them, uh, Project Kindness is triggered, and it is regarding making appreciation cards for healthcare heroes. So please participate. There is the email already out. 
you can find more details and if you need more information please contact anerisha in case you need more details for that uh that's all i had for announcements uh without wasting much time i'll move uh, i'll hand over to arti aunty for over sagram arti aunty please begin એમણે જે લખ્યું છે એ જરા પ્રાર્થના છે એ કરીશ અને ત્યાર પછી સંભળાય છે અચ્છા ત્યાર પછી ઓવસ અગ્રમ રિસાઈડ કરીશું અને આઈ રિક્વેસ્ટ ઓલ ઓફ યુ રિગાર્ડલેસ ઓવસ અગ્રમ આવડતું હોય ના આવડતું હોય પણ ભાવથી બહુ જ સાથે જોડાજો જે અત્યારે કોરોના વાયરસ ચાલી રહ્યો છે એના માટે આપણે બધા જીવોને શાંતિ ઈચ્છીએ છીએ અને પ્રાર્થના કરીએ કે જેટલું બને એટલું જલ્દી આ બધી મુશ્કેલીઓ દૂર થાય થેન્ક યુ મંગલ મંદિર ખોલો ગયા માય મંગલ મંદિર ખોલો જીવન વનતી વેગે વટાવ્યો દ્વાર જ્યોતિ પ્રકાશ શિશુ ને ઉર માલ્યો દયા મંગલ મંદિર ખોલો નામ મધુર તમ્યો નિરંતર શિશુ સહ પ્રેમ બોલો દિવ્ય તૃષાતુર આવ્યો બાળક પ્રેમ અમીરસ ઢોળો દયા મંગલ મંદિર ખોલો મંગલ મંદિર ખોલો દયા મંગલ મંદિર ખોલો વિસહર વિસંગલ કલ્યાણ આવાસમ વિસહર ઉલેંગમંત કંઠે ધારે જો સયામણુઓ તસગરો ગુજરા જંતી વસામ ચેઠવું દૂર મંતો તુજ પણામો વિબહુ ફલો હોય નરતિરિય સુ વિજીવાવંતિન દુઃખદો ગચમ ચિંતામણિ કપાય વપ 
ಪಾವಂತಿ ಅವಿಕೇಣ ಜೀವ ಅಯ್ಯರ ಮರಂಠಾಳ ಸಂತು ಮಹಾಯಸ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪರ ನಿಭರಣ ಹಿಯಣ ತಾದೇವ ದೀಚ ಗೋಹಿ ಭವೆ ಭವೆ ಪಾಸ ಜಿಣ ಚಂದ ಭವೆ ಭವೆ ಪಾಸ ಜಿಣ ಚಂದ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಜೈ ಜಿ uh thank you arti aunty so with that we reach to the end of monthly meeting our next webex section session is on next sunday looking forward for a great discussion thanks for joining everyone please be safe and good in health bye bye hello hello jinisasana deva ki jai jai jinendra jai jinendra <laughs> ಜಯೇಂದ್ರ 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 ಜಯೇಂದ್ರ